bit of a twinge in, in the in the gut to, to see something like that. It really, really, really puts a human face on on what happened uh, just 48, just uh, more than 48 hours ago. Thanks, Paula. Well, uh, Paula mentioned uh, how difficult travel is around New York. Uh, we know the travel around the country has been nearly impossible for many. What you're looking at now is a live picture that we have set up from the Department of Transportation, and we're expecting any minute now the Secretary of Transportation, Norm Mineta, is going to be coming out and announcing uh, that there will be a reopening of the airports across the country under certain guidelines and certain conditions, and we'll get more information on that when that press conference gets underway, and we'll get there live. Uh, well, actually, we'll, we may end up having to stick around for a couple of minutes. Uh, nothing. No, apparently we do not have a press conference right now. We were going to be having another guest, but uh, that's going to have to be delayed for yeah. just a moment. Darren, over to you. Uh, that's how it happens when we have a live television. We will get to that guest. Very important topic to talk about. How do we talk to our kids about uh, what has taken place and how do you keep them from being scared? Someone who knows a lot, a lot about that, father of two, also one of our best correspondents here at CNN. Marty Savage is in New York City, May his way up there and uh, brings us more coverage from there. Martin. you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can't see you, though. There you are. All right. There we are. Well, let me tell you exactly what is going on right now. And there is an intensive search and rescue effort that is underway. Specifically, though, we are hearing reports it is focusing on an individual, a survivor who is believed to be trapped in the sub-basement underneath the Building 1. We know more details about this, but I am right now hesitant to tell them about you because tell them to you because I don't want to give families out there, thousands of families, any false hope. But at this particular point, we know that this person has been communicating with authorities over a cell phone, was heard most recently, we were told, by a rescuer at about 4.30 this morning. Now, the problem is there's tons and tons of steel trapped over this specific position. And the effort right now is to try to lift that steel out of the way. We saw a short while ago an army of iron workers that have come in. They have joined the throng of rescuers on site here, and they are literally cutting away piece by piece the pieces that made up the Twin Towers. Now, we've been showing you the automobiles. We've been showing you the pieces of paper. But quite frankly, if you want the most graphic depiction of what has transpired on the tragedy, walk to the end of the block down here. Twin 110-story buildings now have been reduced to a pile of rubble that stands about 100 feet tall. That is the clearest example of the devastation that has been visited on New York City here. And as the workers try to go in and do their job there, many of them now are putting on repelling harnesses. They are using ropes because they are literally attaching themselves to any strong points that they can find because that pile is so loose and so capable of shifting. So they use these harnesses, attach themselves, and clamber down much like mountain climbers. They do not believe that any survivors are now going to be found above ground. They have been certain. Marty, I'm sorry, we're going to have to interrupt you. We'll get back to you in a moment. Want to take our viewers to Pennsylvania. This is an FBI news conference, the latest on United Airlines Flight 93. Um, as we've talked about yesterday, and we'll continue to talk about until it's resolved, the other priority that we're working on is the black box, the voice recorder. We're, as of right now, we have not, it has not been located. We're confident that we're going to keep working on it and we will uh, account for it. And that, as I said, that is the other investigative, uh, that's the investigative priority right now is to locate that. We're still doing the grid searches. Um, we're working on uh, covering the entire crime scene and we'll go wherever the evidence leads us. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, questions regarding uh, the flight path. There's an awful lot of information out there. Uh, in a, we have determined that the flight was heading in an eastern direction, and that's coming from the NTSB. Beyond that, anything else is, would be speculative on our part, and we really don't want to go any further than that, but we will confirm that the plane was heading in an easterly direction. That's coming from the NTSB. The, uh, to give you a little bit of an idea, of how we're operating up there. Uh, one of the questions to us has been how many uh, agencies are up there and who are they? One of the things, we have tremendous amount of agencies that are up there with personnel and it fluctuates on a daily basis depending on the needs of that day. What we've been doing is who's ever up there, they have their own meetings and their own objectives, whatever the organization is, whether it be the Red Cross trying to get enough food for the workers and for, and for you, all the way to any leads that are being generated from the state police or the FBI or any other federal law enforcement. All the different agencies are up there 
trying to work and do the job that, that what they're here for. They're meeting all the heads of the different agencies that are up for that particular day meet twice. They meet at 9 a.m. and they meet at 2 p.m. And basically they go around the room and everybody talks about what it is that they've accomplished and what it is that they're working on. And then at that point, uh, the people who need to know have a good idea of how things are working, how things are funneling. So we have a clue what's going on and people know what's, what's happening here on this site. Now that's only for this site. And as you're well aware, uh, the FBI alone has over 4,000 uh, agents working not only nationwide but worldwide trying to track down any leads. Um, it's an awful lot of information. Uh, anything of an investigative nature that will be released will be released out of Washington, D.C., most likely from either the uh, Attorney General or the President or the Director of the FBI. Uh, we're focused here on what's going on here on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what we hope to uh, convey to you with our press conferences that we're going to have twice daily. Um, and that's what we're focusing on. There's been a lot of questions regarding the crater itself. Uh, according to people who have been involved in these investigations, such as the NTSB and the state police, when, a, when the plane goes in uh, on, a, on the ground, there's a tendency, for an, obviously, for an awful lot of dirt to be moved. Uh, and dust, as you can tell from the roads We've around here. We've been listening here, in on an FBI news area. conference, the latest on the crash of United Airlines Flight 93. That's the one that was on its way from Newark to San Francisco when it crashed on Tuesday morning. Still have not recovered the black box, yet they're still hopeful they will find it. The grid process goes on, and they also had more information that the NTSB saying that they do know at this point that that plane was headed in an easterly direction when it crashed. More information on that just ahead right now. Here's Leon. Well, actually, I would like to, I hate to do this over the air, but I must ask the producers. I just now see that uh, Transportation Secretary Norman, Norman Mineta is now at the podium. We want to hear what he has to say In order to, to right restore now. our security to the fullest extent possible, we exercise the necessary precautions while assessing our nation's transportation systems. Now I am pleased to announce some good news for travelers, for our economy, and for the restoration of America's freedom of mobility. Effective 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time today, our national airspace system will reopen to commercial aviation. At this moment, the FAA reports that we have airports starting to reopen across the country. Now this decision was made after a series of meetings throughout the day, yesterday, and late into Wednesday night with the White House and other cabinet officials, Federal Aviation Administrator Jane Garvey and her great team, aviation industry leaders, as well as intelligence and law enforcement representatives. I must caution everyone that a system as diverse and complex as ours cannot be brought up instantly. And so we will be reopening airports and airlines will be resuming their flights since as they meet the new security uh, measures that we are now imposing. Additional airports will be opened only after they meet the new stringent security measures. Anyone planning on flying today, or not even today, but henceforth. I only recommend you contact the number that I gave you. Uh, people are in route. As we've been told that people are in route. That's coming from United Airlines. And they are supposed to go to that location, the Seven Springs Resort location. And that would be your best bet on where to get information on the families. That is going to be coordinated through well, United we have to Airlines. I apologize for the, the switch in the audio there of that transmission we were getting from the Department of Transportation. Unfortunately, that was not under our control. We did get the top of the report there that uh, Transportation Secretary Normanetta has announced that the skies over the America will begin opening at as of 11 a.m. Eastern Time. The process of reopening is going to be a gradual one because he says that with a system as diverse and as broad as the, as the one that does exist here in the U.S., it can't be done instantaneously. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we now have the audio problem straightened up. Let's go back to we'll that report. It will take place before passengers are allowed to board any aircraft. Uh, we have discontinued 
off airport check in and curbside check in at the airport all passengers will be required to go to the ticket counters to check in we must reserve boarding areas for passengers only and only ticketed passengers will be allowed to proceed past airport screeners and all vehicles near airport terminals will be monitored more closely we experienced an unprecedented assault on our commercial aviation system and in times such as these we will use all available resources to ensure the safety of our travelers agents from the department of justice and from the Department of Treasury will be employed to air uh, will be deployed to airports across the country the added presence of these officers will augment our existing heightened security procedures serving as a visible reminder of our strong commitment to protect the safety of the American people and the traveling public again I strongly urge all passengers to allow plenty of time to deal with the heightened security procedures and also to exercise patience with airport and airline employees and security personnel. Finally, let me say this. From this day forward, we are operating with tightened security. In the weeks and months ahead, we will do all that we can to ensure that the safety of the American aviation system is in place. We will not allow this enemy to win the war by restricting our freedom of mobility. I wish again to express my hope that all Americans will heed the President's call to keep the victims and their families in our prayers and our thoughts as we go about the task of recovering and rebuilding. I will now take uh, questions. Uh, what is the situation now with general aviation, with business aviation, and the cargo carriers? Uh, first of all, the cargo carriers are not being differentiated, differentiated uh, from the commercial passenger uh, airliners. Uh, there are certain requirements being put on them in terms of security uh, and safety measures, but uh, they are uh, back in the air again, effective 11 a.m. On private or general aviation, rather, uh, I will have a little more uh, on that subject uh, later this day. But right now, this is a, a, a uh, announcement only as it relates to the commercial and cargo airline. As of 11 a.m., you can't go out and hop in your Cessna and take off? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Secretary. Um, Mr. Secretary, some safety. We've been listening to the Transportation Secretary, Normanetta, and make the announcement that uh, things in the skies over America will be getting back to normal sometime fairly soon. He announced that the airports and, will, and airlines will begin the process of, of going back to regular service. He did announce, though, a number of restrictions that passengers should expect to now have to endure. Number one, them being off airport and curbside check in will no longer be allowed. The boarding areas at most at all airports will only be accessible for ticketed passengers only. And all vehicles that are, are near terminals are going to be monitored more closely. And he's also advising that passengers allow for plenty of extra time now for these added security measures. And he's also asking for extra patience, which is no doubt going to be needed. We'll continue to monitor that and bring you any other new developments that come out on that angle. But we want to move on and, and get to a story, uh, an angle of this that we've been trying to get to for some time now. And that is, what do you do with your children or the children in your family that may be trying to, to deal with or in, in their minds grapple with what has happened here, the, the tragedy that hit this country on Tuesday? We're joined this morning by Dr. Alvin Poussin, who's been standing by very patiently, I should add, uh, with us in Boston, Massachusetts this morning. And, and Doctor, thank you very much for bearing with us through the different breaking news mm -hmm. that we've had today and yesterday, as a matter of fact, as well. We're very glad to have you, and, and because most of us in this building 
have a lot of respect and we are very familiar